Oh, boosh, time for another video. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be creating a, what are we creating? An abstract paper cutout style vector design. Wow, that was a mouthful. And we're doing this all in Adobe Illustrator. It's pretty easy actually, it's not that difficult. It takes about six, six and a half minutes to explain. So uh, if you're new to Illustrator, hopefully you enjoy this and learn something new. But uh, anyway, let's jump to the screen now and get started. Rightio, so starting with a new document from the swatches panel, you can see I have two swatches, yellow and orange, and you could download the project files from the video description. Right, let's select the pen tool, and we may need to zoom out a bit here. And then it's time to start drawing our first shape. So with the pen tool, you can click, click, click and draw a straight line dot to dot, or you can click and hold and drag out a curve. Now I am going to try and make these curves as smooth as possible. However, if yours end up all janky, don't worry, I'm gonna show you a technique to get around that later on. And yes, my curves do turn out pretty terrible as well, most of the time, um, <laughs> so you're not alone. Okay, so clicking on that first anchor point will close the shape. And then we can select the stroke, set this to none, and then just make sure we have the fill selected. Then it's time to go to the gradient panel, and if you don't see this, you can find it at the window menu at the top. Click anywhere on the gradient slider to add the default gradient, and double click the black swatch. I'm then going to apply the orange here, and then double click the white swatch, and apply the yellow to the other end, or whichever color swatches you're using. And by the way, you're not limited to just two colors, you can use three or four as well, so uh, yeah, go crazy. Not literally crazy, just like with the design, just go, go go a bit wild. Now we can also click in this box here to adjust the angle of the gradient, and we can also click this icon here to instantly reverse the gradient, so very useful. Next, let's go ahead and select the rectangle tool, and click and drag to draw a shape that fills the entire artboard. Right click anywhere on the shape, and then go to Arrange, and select Send to Back. This is going to be our background. And of course, being our background, we don't want to move it by mistake, so let's make sure we lock that selection. Now if you click and hold on the Shaper tool, you'll find the Pencil tool. Next I'm going to double click the colour picker, and I'm going to pick a colour for the shadow. So this is going to be a brownie, reddy, orangey kind of colour. Something that's in a similar hue range to the two colours I'm using. Then from the Swatches panel, I'm going to click the new icon, and I'm going to add this as a global swatch. Okay, swatch added. Now that's done, I'm going to draw my shadow. Now the benefit to doing it this way rather than doing a drop shadow is that I can actually choose where I want this shadow to appear. And if I take a second to apply that brown fill color, you can see it doesn't follow the path of the original shape. And you'll see why in a moment. So next let's go to effect and then down to blur and select Gaussian blur. Now depending on the size of your document, you'll want to adjust this value, so I'm going to bring this up a bit, and you can see where I've drawn this with the pencil tool, certain parts of the shadow are more pronounced than others. And if you do get that weird hard edge to your shadow, don't worry, there is a way around this. Go to Document Raster Effects Settings, and there's a few settings you can change here, one of which may help. So we'll start by going for 300 ppi, we'll check anti-alias, and we'll also bump the clipping up to 720 pixels, which is the maximum. Hopefully this helps, and there you go, you can see in this example, the shadow is nice and smooth, no more hard edges. Okay, as promised, it's time to fix those wonky edges. So let's select that shape we pen tooled at the beginning, and then select the smooth tool. Now when you do select the smooth tool, oftentimes it will deselect your current object. Nobody knows why. <laughs> So you will need to reselect the smooth tool and your object, and then you're good to go. Now you can repeatedly click and drag over these janky curves to try and smooth them out. And this may add and remove anchor points as you can see, but it's a very quick and easy way to smooth out any janky curves. Right, now I'm just gonna take a minute to repeat those steps and create a few more shapes. Okay, so before we go any further, a quick trick to copy appearance effects. Switch over to the layers panel and expand it down. Find the sub layer that you'd like to copy the effects from. Hover over the circle alongside, hold Alt or Option, and then click and drag to the layer you would like to apply the effects to. There we go, the color brown and the blur effect copied to another layer. And rest assured, this will save you a ton of time. Okay, now it's time to use that technique to create shadows for all of the other shapes. So, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see it's starting to come together. Now I'm going to select one of these shapes here and go to the gradient panel and I'm going to adjust the angle. And I'm actually going to do this for all of the shapes because making sure there is variety in the gradients is the difference between your design being terrible and really, really good. And remember, you can do this entire thing with more than two colors as well. Okay, let's just spend a second tinkering with those gradients. Now we are going to make some changes to the background, so let's unlock that one first and then select the background. This can be a bit tricky, so you can press Command or Control Y to go into outline mode, which sometimes makes it much easier to select specific shapes. And for this background, I'm going to set the gradient type to radial so that yellow is emanating out from the center. Now with that background rectangle still selected, I'm going to go to edit and copy and then edit and paste in front. And then from the color picker, I'm going to pick black. That's all the way in the bottom left corner. Now let's use this shortcut to bring this to the front so it sits on top of everything. And then go up to effect and then down to texture. And you can pick any of these and experiment, but I'm going to select grain. And there we go, we have a default grain. I can zoom in and change the grain type. I'm gonna use stippled, stipled, however you say it, and you can adjust the intensity and the contrast. So tinker with these sliders, let that preview load, it might take a second. And once you're happy, click OK. And spoiler, this may reduce your computer to the speed of a potato. A really small potato, not even a big one. So I'd save your document before you do this. Now we can't see anything, of course, so let's click on opacity and then change the blending mode to soft light. Of course, feel free to experiment with other blending modes as well. And there you go, you can see the texture has been applied. However, it's quite aggressive at the moment. So let's drop that opacity down to somewhere between 10 and 40%. So you can see I've gone for 30 here, which just adds a nice subtle texture to the design. And let's go to object and lock the selection just so we don't move the grain around by mistake. So we can carry on working on the design if we so choose. And if you spend just a teeny bit longer on your design, you can end up with something that looks like this. Oh, and there we go. That wraps up the video. So I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. If you're hungry for more Illustrator, I've got another one here and another one here that I think you'll really enjoy. But as always, you've been absolutely excellent. Take care and I'll see you next time. Yeah.